might happen? Well, I think it's fairly obvious that yes, the adults are obviously quite active in the different activities that take part, be it budgeons or uh, various festivals that take place. But when it comes to regular activities, you might find less and less uh, of the youth taking part. Yes, we need to get the youth involved and find out what attracts them and possibly more people to the SAI organization. Um, and one way to possibly do that is find out what is it that's going to interest them. Now, when it comes to the youth, they don't necessarily want to be just part of the audience and in some ways just sit there and listen. It is some ways some, uh, sometimes a bit boring. Just because you're sitting there, you might not be talking, uh, there's still something you can get out of it. Yeah. Uh, it's not necessarily boring, it's only boring if you actually make it seem boring. But in some cases, if we're going to talk about the Sai youth themselves, sometimes what you'll find is a bit of laziness in some cases. Uh, in my case, I think it's just the fact like, well, what else am I going to do on the day? We're cruising along the M1, right? Yep. yep. Heading towards Manchester yep. on the 25th of April, 2016. And here's Mesh's dad. And, and back here is his mom and his mom's college friend. Let me see if I can get you there. And here's Mesh. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a first for Sojourns. Let's hope it works. How are you doing, Mesh? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you doing? Do you remember what it is that we want to talk about today? Briefly. Okay. It's briefly going to be expressed to those who are watching now okay. that you have a concern that I share with you and presumably others do around the world too who are side devotees and that's called the, let's just call it for lack of a better term, the future of the Psy Youth Movement throughout the world. Okay. In the UK, in America, and elsewhere. And you mentioned it to me, and it's like you were reading my mind, because there's <laughs> lots of people like us who are concerned. Yes. Tell me a little bit where your concern comes from and what um, you think might happen. Well, I think it's fairly obvious that, yes, the adults are obviously quite active in the different activities that take part, be it budgeons or uh, various festivals that take place and bujas and things. Um, but when it comes to regular activities, you might find less and less uh, of the youth taking part. Um, Such as yesterday's activities? Yeah, part, uh, partly even those. Uh, they, they might work behind the scenes in some cases, but when it comes to things like the audience, you won't find many youth in there. Um, you might find the odd few here and there when, they, when it comes to taking part or working behind the stage uh, scenes like I mentioned, but that's probably about it. Fr from what I remember, there was a time when it, regularly there would be the youth from the various Sai organizations uh, that would go to Prashantanilia and do bhajans and other festivals and things. Um, if I'm right, I think that's probably become less and less, uh, obviously, as Baba has passed away. Um, but also, I think it's the interest of the youth. Um, in some ways, you could say it's similar to a child, where when it's new, a child is really interested in it. But then it's been there for a while, so they're looking for something new. Yeah. Uh, so in a way, they've become a bit bored, possibly. So when it comes to things like budgeons, uh initially it would probably happen once a month, once every couple of months, possibly. Uh, but when it becomes a bit more regular, there's less interest from the youth. Um, but as the adults are more mature and they understand the spiritual reasoning behind it, um, that's why they probably uh, come and take part more regularly than the youth do. Yep. And I looked out over the audience yesterday, I saw lots of smiling faces. I didn't see a whole lot of youth there. No. So this is kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, generally. Um, I mean, the, the other thing you would have noticed, and this is probably more, well, not necessarily just Sai organizations, but probably a global scale, uh, you'll probably find more women taking part than men which might also want to actually be looked into as to why that's happening, I don't know. So that's a, that spans age groups, it's a gender issue. That, that's partly a gender issue. When you look at Prashanti Nilium, you'll find both sides, yeah. men and women, fully packed out and yeah. going beyond. When it comes to um, practices such as be it budgeons or the event of yesterday, uh, the ladies' side will almost always be 95 to 100 plus percent packed out. The men's you'll be lucky if you get 40% generally. Mm -hmm. um, 
when it comes to working back, uh, behind the scenes, you'll find it's a bit of a mix in the sense, yes, you'll have ladies and men, but when it comes to the audience, you'll only barely ever find 40% there. Um, why that is, I don't fully know. That's, that's way, way beyond me at the minute. Um, but yeah, the, the youth, I can't necessarily say why uh, if there wasn't that many there in the audience, apart from part of the interest. So you brought up the issue, you were reading my mind, because I felt like bringing it up myself on a couple of occasions since I've been here. Does this mean that you have already thought out a proposal as to how to resolve this issue? <laughs> or is that wishful thinking on my part? That, that might be a bit wishful thinking. Um, I mean, uh, that, the only thing that comes to mind initially is uh, yes, we need to get the youth involved and find out what attracts them and possibly more people to the SAI organization. Um, and one way to possibly do that is find out what is it that's going to interest them. Sometimes it might be actual activities that you might want to do fairly regularly for the youth alone. Uh, sometimes, like on a larger scale, uh, they're quite happy to get involved backstage but not necessarily just watch in the audience to see what's happening. So that might be another thing. Um, but without speaking to several uh, youth members at a time or a group in one go, it's quite hard to identify the one or multiple reasons as to why there's not that many there. Um, apart from the SSC students that will take part the majority of the time, um, I'm not sure who else really does. There's a relatively small handful of people who I think still consider themselves to be active Sai Baba followers, perhaps proportionately even smaller now among the Sai youth. What keeps you in there? Ooh. I, it's a tough um, question and I that's a fairly I tough apologize one. It um, in some, well, I think it's partly down to the individual. Um, I mean, my brother is less of a follower, I guess, than myself, you could say. Um, but in some cases, if we're going to talk about the Sai youth themselves, uh, obviously we can understand if they've actually got programs going on on the day or if they're dedicated, committed to something on that specific day and time. Um, but sometimes what you'll find is a bit of laziness in some cases. Uh, in my case, I think it's just the fact like, well, what else am I going to do on the day? Uh, I've got the option of doing nothing at home, uh, potentially going out with friends, spending money, or going to an event which I'll enjoy, I'll be with the family, and I might actually gain something out of it. So there's several different ways to look at it. Um, yeah, that's, that's generally what I would say. I mean, there's, it is quite intriguing when it comes to uh, taking part in these events, be it various other uh, relations you take, um, Sorry, various other relatives who take part in uh, religious activities, uh, which may not necessarily be Sai Baba related. Um, so it, it's quite exhilarating at times because you're taking part. You're one of the key things about Sai Baba. You're taking part in service, yeah. um, which just from the inside, you actually, as soon as you start doing it, uh, after a short while, you actually enjoy. It. You enjoy the environment. You enjoy the activity, uh, the people you're around. Uh, and that's that's one of the key aspects I think when it comes to uh, the different activities and um, events that take place that you're almost always going to be involved in one way or another even if it's uh, when it comes to setting up you might just be putting the chairs out you might be setting up tables you might be involved in the decoration you might be involved in uh, the technology side you might be involved in the art side you might be involved in various different uh, ways um, based on what your capability might be uh, in some cases, you might just be there for the audience, um, but either way, you, you can still take part. Now, when it comes to the youth, they don't necessarily want to be just part of the audience and in some ways just sit there and listen. Uh, understandably, in the youth's case, it is some ways some, uh, sometimes a bit boring, um, but I think it's partly a mindset as well to see um, you might just because you're sitting there, you might not be talking, uh, there's still something you can get out of it. Yeah. Uh, it's not necessarily boring. It's only boring if you actually make it seem boring. Well, you know, what we're talking about, I think, has to do with the times. Right now, also, there's uh, many tug-of-wars going on in a person's mind about where they should turn their attention. 
the social media, which is all-encompassing for many people, young and old. Um, and, and there's all sorts of societal distractions now, especially for young people. I mean, I've uh, visited various different um, activities, you could say, be it Hindu, Muslim. Uh, I've seen Sikhs in action. I've seen Christians in action. And the one main thing you do get, uh, because it's varied in age range uh, that I've seen, um, is they enjoy the service they're doing. Uh, now, when I was working in Nottingham and I would finish around 8 o'clock in the evening, I think probably twice or three times a week there'd be um, what the Sikhs would hold. I can't remember exactly what it was called, but for the homeless, there would be a, a couple of tables out there and they'd be serving their food. And this was generally the youth who were taking part, with a couple of adults maybe supervising. And, you know, they, they were just offering it to the homeless. Now, they would definitely enjoy it. Now, when I say youth, I am talking around my age. I'm not mm -hmm. talking little children who exactly. are probably 10, exactly. 11 years old. I am talking those who go to university. To 35 year olds. Partly those as well, yeah. Sometimes, uh, like I mentioned, the adults were there who were in their 40s or above. Uh, otherwise, there were people who were between the ages of 18 and 30, I would mm -hmm. say. Uh, and they were, you know, obviously, but be it raining, boiling hot, though eight o'clock at night is not necessarily boiling hot, uh, be it snowing, be it cold, whatever the weather, um, two out of two, three days out of the week, in the evenings, they would be there for a good 15, 20 minutes, and they'd just be offering food. Um, that they would, they hand made food to the people. Now, you'd be thinking like, well, they're not really getting anything out of this, but they are, they're getting the happiness. They're getting the service, they're getting, in a way, spiritual healing and growth. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what the Sikhs, in a way, were doing in Nottingham. Uh, there was another person I was working with in a school a few years ago, and uh, the church he comes from, uh, I think once a year or so, in a small remote village that you can't even find on Google Maps in India, he went and spent a good two, three weeks uh, just helping people there on his own and you think that well you've spent X amount of hundred pounds for the plane ticket you've spent X amount of hundred pounds maybe for you know living there what's he possibly got out of it well he's got his own happiness because he feels that from his religious beliefs uh, he is actually helping other people he's helping in service over there as well and he loves what he's doing and one thing you'll find is the more service people do the more their personality improves in a potentially positive way uh, because you're not necessarily very angry that often but you're quite appreciative of what's going on around you you're more calm uh, quite regularly um, and I think that's something that's kind of been missed quite often within the modern day society uh, because yes there's a lot of opportunities out there but people like you mentioned are more interested in the social aspect and getting yeah. involved with either clubbing or girlfriends, friends. Um, I guess, yeah, in, in some ways that's okay, but you, you probably want to look at, okay, what else can you do in your spare time? Right. Uh, and offering the service to various people, be it even working for a couple of hours in charity shops, just giving them a hand. Exactly. Uh, that can be quite useful. It's uh, not like there's a dearth of opportunities. You can look in almost any direction. Exactly. You can. things to if, do. If you want, you can actually on your way you're walking maybe you finished work you're going to the bus stop you might find someone homeless uh, and sitting on the streets with maybe some pets or something they're probably asking for money you can actually say I've not got money but then go around uh, to something like the subway or something yeah. or Tesco buy some food go over it's like a five-minute job there's your service in a way right. <laughs> Mesh, I really think that you're an amazing young man and uh, to be fair, you didn't volunteer to be a spokesperson for this situation that I call <laughs> the Psy Youth um, Dilemma. You did say, why don't I uh, put together a panel of uh, Psy Youth and, and chew on this issue? Yeah. And I propose, why don't we do it one person at a time, starting with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really glad I did, because okay. you're, you're extraordinarily eloquent, and you have a calming nature, and Thank you know you. what you're talking about, but you've talked about oh, some boy. wonderful ideas, and maybe something will emerge from this as other youth see this and volunteer to share their point of view. How about a final comment about where the world's heading with people your age? Um, 
well, it can be broken down into several different ways. You've got obviously the financial side of things. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, understandably, everyone's going to look for work. Everyone wants wants a good work, social, balanced life. Um, but I think the spiritual and service side can definitely help you in there. Are you still content being a follower of Sri Satya Sai Baba? Um, yeah, I am. I am. I am content. Um, but I personally still need to grow myself. That's great, Mesh. Thank you very much. This has been really more than I. It exceeded my expectations by a hundred percent. Okay. And I'm very grateful. I know you'll hear back from us. Do you mind giving us your email address? And I won't use that unless you give me permission to for people who might want to write you a You've got permission. I've got permission. Very yes. good. So repeat it one more time. Uh, it's, I'll use the other alphabet. It's Kilo Hotel Echo Tango India Alpha underscore Mother at yahoo.co.uk. You've done that a couple of times. <laughs> yes, yes. Mesh, thank you. God bless you and Sai Ram. Sai Ram.